3D printers print? Well, until they don't. And I've recently had a clogging on both of my RF100, quite incidentally caused by my own idiocy. And because I had to tear down the extruders anyway, I wanted to show you what's inside and how to do it. The first step involves removing the jet. For this, we take the key, mount it, and then we use the other key and we simply turn it out. You see, like this. When you do it for the first time, this will be incredibly tight. When you're doing it for the second or the third time, the strength of this connection depends on how much you've tightened it. Either way, then out comes at least this jet and usually also this pipe, which here will not go out because I didn't turn the printer on. Normally, you should do this while the printer is heated up. The reward of the effort is this assembly here, which you see, it's a PTFE pipe and it's the actual nozzle. And both of these need to be cleaned up. And how to clean them up, it's basically pretty simple. Now it comes to cleaning this thing. This is one of the spaces where having a zippo really helps because the zippo can stand like that. And I'm now not going to do it live because otherwise I'm going to burn myself and that would be funny. But the trick is you hold it either with a tweezer or with your hand, heat it up. And while you heat it up, you use the small key to ram through it to get any kind of material which is stuck inside that tube out. And yes, it must really go out. And then the second part is this thing. Basically, you also grab it with a tweezer, hold it over the thing, heat it up, and then you use a thin wire until you can go through the head of the extruder. And when we are done, the 1.5 millimeter key should fit through perfectly, as you saw here goes through all the way in. In an ideal case, we could simply put it together now and be done. But sadly, in practice, there often is a second clogging in here. So when we open this, first we need to take a brush. This is some beaver brush, which my wife bought. And we just want to give it a good brushing so that we don't put in any more dust into the extruder. So you see here we give it a good brush and then it's time to start opening the individual points. With the two millimeter we go here and open this one which is incredibly tight as you see and also here on the side there is a second screw which we also want to remove. And we need to be careful because these two screws are different. That's the only time when there are two different screws in one step. Quite incidentally, these two screws at the top, they can stay where they are. And the reward is that we can now jiggle this free. You see here, we can jiggle it off to the back. And here on top, we've got the PCB, the adapter PCB, which we're going to be not bothering with right now. The next interesting point for us are these four screws here for the fan, 2.5 millimeter, and you remove them. Or at least normally you remove them if you don't have a tremor. And this also is a very, very common point of defect on the RF-100. These fans, they eventually die, but you can more or less replace them with any stock fan which you can source just about wherever you want. And well, you've got to remove all four of these screws. Here you see one from the top and its comrade from the bottom. And you see the two bottom screws are longer than the two top screws. And now that we've got the screws removed, we can also see the content of the state of Denmark because you see the two long screws, they go in, in there. And yes, the fan, we just leave it dangling down here on the cable ties. 
At this point, we need to remove this here. It's the stepper motor, this cable, and we just need to jiggle it free from the PCB a little bit so that we get it out. It's a bit difficult to do it on camera if you don't have both hands, but you see like this, you get it out. It's a pretty sturdy connector. And now it's time to get the actual motor. We put one hand at the back to hold the stepper and then we open these two here in the front. It's a bit difficult at times as you see. And either way you need to open these two screws and remove them. And then there's one last screw here on top which must also go. Here's another one because there's always two screws. And then there are two more small screws here which you must also remove and quite incidentally this hole is where the filament goes into the extruder. And then there's one last guy here in the back, this guy, we remove him, we see the assembly is quite fibbly and now the motor falls off and I'm doing this intentionally a bit slowly so that you see what I've got in my hands here. So what do we have here? The stepper motor which you incidentally must never open, a bolt of steel and the tooth gear. This tooth gear will bite into the filament and will drive the filament up or down. So giving it a gentle wipe with a brush is recommended. And here we have the second part of the extruder with this wheel which incidentally can fall out. So we should be quite careful. We remove this here with the wheel which we can also give a gentle wipe. And as said, it can fall out, so we should be careful with it. It's a bearing wheel, as you see here. And here we see the actual clog. It is stuck in here at the bottom end of this thing. And this is the kind of clog which is the worst one on the RF100 system and it's the most difficult to remove. The strategy to fix this problem is, in the first place, we need to find out how bad the damage is. And for this, I take this, I go in from the bottom, which is a bit difficult if you can't look, I dig and then I take it out. And you see now I know that the thing is not very deep. So it's about here, it's pretty shallow. And now we can do two things. The first thing is we can go in here, pull gently and hope and I have to tell you normally this doesn't work and then it's time for more brutal measures. In the first step we go in here and we cut it off as close as possible as we can and when the thing has heated up itself successfully enough then we go in here and we try to push this down. This can take a few attempts Sometimes you need to go over and heat it up again, but eventually you should be able to get at the bottom of the problem. And you see, after playing around with it for a bit, I got it through and the dirt is now here at the bottom of the thing. So now this is cleared as well. To remove it, we simply heat it up again and then we remove the key to the top and we proceed to reassembling the whole thing. This is a trick which I've stolen from my wife. You see here I've got a good heavy plier. I take a zippo and then you see I heat up the bottom of the key for like 10 to 15 seconds so that it becomes very very hot. If you touch it it becomes painful and then you just carefully put it inside from the top. In some cases this leftover can be very stubborn and well then you cut it off here. Be careful not to damage the key and then you can try to burn it off. The good flame and you see it catches fire and it burns off. But you need to be careful that you don't take too much of it because otherwise there might be damage. So it should only be a very small little leftover at the bottom of the key. 
And of course, you must be careful, the key gets hot as f Quite incidentally, here you see this hole. It normally collects quite a bit of filament dust as well. And you should wash it up with the brush just a little bit in and out to make it clean again. And finally, because I get asked quite often what I need. Here you've got the three hex keys, 1.5, 2 and 2.5 millimeters, the 8 millimeter hex key and the variable 20 millimeter maximum hex key. You should buy a 20 millimeter one because the other ones are too small to effectively grab the head of the printer. And now, as Lieutenant Gillett in Jacked Aliens 2 would say, the 3D printer is ready for box. This kind of procedure might look a bit elaborate, but in practice, especially if you have a second pair of hands, it takes about half an hour, not more than that. So, I hope that you enjoyed this little clip. Please subscribe and like, because there will be much more content and also please, please follow me on Instagram. So thank you very much and see you next time.